ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John Mulrooney, everybody. John Mulrooney! That's enough. Pace yourselves. How is everybody tonight? Good to have you here. Nice to be in Sarasota. Let's get a few things straight right up front. My name is John. I am a, an adult homo sapien stand-up comedian. I make my living doing comedy, so I identify as funny. So that makes my pronouns he he. <laughs> Unless I'm down here in the south and then it's hee-haw. Unless I go to the ghetto and it's hey-ho. Sorry, nobody from the ghetto? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Got the folks from Brooklyn here today. Hey, how you doing? What's going on over there? What's up? And that's a woman. Where you from over there? Long Island. Long Island. You know Frankie? Yeah. I'm surprised we're getting anything out of this guy. Typically, you can't ask New Yorkers anything. What do you do for a living? I do things. Yeah. Who are you sitting with? They're people. That's all you got to know. Mind your own business. All right? Come from a big New York Irish family. That makes me a recovering Catholic. Are there recovering Catholics in the audience here tonight? Very nice. Nice to have you here. I know. It's so crazy tonight. Everything, the world is so upside down right now, isn't it? It's nuts. I don't want to upset the LGBTQRSTUVWR2D2 community, but I... I have no idea what's going on with you guys. You gotta explain it to me. <laughs> you gotta let me know. Do you remember when dating out of your religion was a big deal? Yes. Now it's okay to date outside of your species. <laughs> Do right? you remember when sleeping with a dog meant being with somebody that was ugly? <laughs> now it means sleeping with a dog. It actually means sleeping with a dog. I know, they're killing us with this diversity, inclusion, and equity nonsense, right? That's how you can remember it, D-I-E, die. <laughs> Diversion, inclusion, and equity. This is, the, this is the new nonsense they're pushing on us. They, we have to be diverse, we have to be diverse now. Everybody needs to be diverse. I love when they tell us there's strength in our diversity. Have you heard this horseshit? Strength in our diversity. Yo, folks, diversity is inherently weak. Hence the root of the word, right? Divide, division, divorce. Right? There's strength in only one thing, folks. Unity. Would you agree? Pretty, pretty basic stuff. I mean, if we want to be unified as a people, we have to be single-minded in purpose, right? It's pretty basic. I mean, we have to stop looking at our differences and start looking at what we have in common. Yeah? Really? That is why white people, black people, Hispanic people, we need to get together and get the Asians out of here. They're the ones screwing it up for everybody, am I right? She'll agree with me. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, listen, they're well-mannered, they're smart, their kids go to good schools, you know? I can say that because I am part Asian. I am cock Asian. If you don't believe me, I'll show you my cock. And believe me when I tell you, it's Asian. <laughs> it's actually, actually Irish. It's not that funny. Don't believe everything they tell you about the Irish. It might not be big, but I'll let you have it a lot of times. I can tell you that much right now. I'll give you the angry inch, I will. Just because I'm hung like a light switch doesn't mean I won't teach you how to choke on a small bone. Glad you're laughing at my pain. <laughs> but there's some truth in that, right? I guarantee you, nobody here has an Irish porno DVD stashed in their house somewhere, am I right? <laughs> oh, the kids are out, popping leprechauns of lust. <laughs> oh, you like that, you little whore? Oh, you come on now, you little slut. Grab a hold of me, Shillelagh, and tickle me lucky like charms. <laughs> They're magically delicious. Irish foreplay. Brace yourself, Mary, I'm coming through the door. <laughs> See, I'm glad you're laughing at See, because everybody lives up to their stereotype in some degree or in some way. Would you agree? 
I am of Irish descent. I don't know if descent is coming in your direction. <laughs> but I was a drunk for many years. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. So I said earlier, you know, Chinese people, you'll never see an Asian guy drunk in a bar going, come on, who want a piece of this? <laughs> Bring it on. I kick everybody ass. Who wants them? What, is there a sniper in the back? <laughs> I know we're in Florida. I know everybody's armed, but oh my God. I love it. You guys are a good crowd. Let's wreck this place. What do you say, huh? <laughs> the guy from New York, as long as you have a story, you gotta have a story. It's all that matters. <laughs> Come from a big family of... Uh, Civil service monkeys, cops and firefighters, other service members here? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what are you, firefighter, police? Fire, what, uh, what department do you work for? Um, You're retarded? Okay. Yeah. I want to <laughs> share that with people. <laughs> You're what, which department? Patterson, New Jersey. Very nice. God bless you. That's, that's a tough gig. I mean, to run into a building that everyone else is running out of, that's courage. Yeah? However, to volunteer and do it for free, that's stupid. <laughs> are you a volunteer or are you paid where you're paid guy? Who's that answering for you? And the missus? Honey, when the men are talking, please. You can't keep the missus quiet, I'm gonna have to, all right? You know? <laughs> the guy from New York, you want me to warm up the back end? <laughs> I'll make it be quiet, don't make me come over there. <laughs> Is that the missus? Yeah. Very nice, how long have you been married? Too long. <laughs> Show of hands, who else isn't getting laid tonight? Dude. No, no, no. <laughs> now I know why it sounds so long, buddy. <laughs> Do you have kids? You have the kid? Two? Very nice. Toughest gig in the business, am I right? Parenting? Now you're answering questions no one asked you. <laughs> Do you have kids? I'm scared to answer. Was it your first time here? I love Christmas. How long have you been married? I have two nephews. <laughs> I don't, that's why all of my kids are safe at home in a napkin. <laughs> Go ahead, let that image sink in for just a little bit. Go ahead, just want everyone to think about that right about now. Don't moan, I could have said sock. <laughs> These are the kids here? This young lady here? They say, okay, what is your name, young lady? Julia. Julia, okay, how old are you? Oh, you're not supposed to ask a woman how old she is, I'm sorry. How much do you weigh? <laughs> how old are you? Oh, God, get some rest, what have you been doing? <laughs> Kidding, look at her father, I told her to stop. <laughs> and what do you do, Julia, are you married? Uh, is this going to be long? I only asked you one question. Boy, are you the polar opposite of your mother? Oh my God. <laughs> How long have you been married? July. <laughs> what do you do, Julia? Well, once when I was eight, I rode my own bicycle, but now I don't do that anymore. But now I like to go <laughs> and, uh, Look at her sister. I wish she would shut up. <laughs> oh my God. You have a boyfriend? Julia, you said you have a boyfriend? Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. And he's not here tonight? No. Maybe if you quiet it down a little bit, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, was that out of line? You thought it if you laughed at it. <laughs> not for nothing. <laughs> How long has mom and dad been married? Uh, stepdad. stepdad, okay. How, all right, lady, relax. Are there issues going on here? It, <laughs> it's not therapy. 
The only reason I ask is because I'm just trying to get a gauge on this. You know, marriage relationships are, they're, they're not easy, right? I have a grandparents who were married 63 years. Is that amazing? 63 years. I got a hold of them on my, I got all my grandfather. They were from the old country, you know. You had to do things a little differently back then. Otherwise you were going to burn in the fires of hell forever. <laughs> But still, pretty amazing at their 63rd wedding anniversary. I gave up to hold my grandfather. I said, so Pop, you're married 63 years. What's the secret? He said, I've only been home three weeks. <laughs> so then I got a hold of my grandmother because I wanted to get a woman's perspective. I said, so Grandma, give me a tip, some heads up, some insight. She said, well, I can tell you one thing that helps for sure. Make certain that your husband's first name is the same as your boyfriend's. <laughs> she said, oh my God, my grandma's a slut. But they were married, my, my, grand, my folks married 55 years, and the priest told them the night they got married to give some very sound advice. He said, never go to bed angry at each other, right? They didn't sleep for 20 years. <laughs> he actually officiated at their 50th wedding anniversary, which was pretty amazing. And uh, I said to him after the, after the ceremony, I said, Father O'Malley, from the old country also. I said, so uh, Padre, I said, uh, you know, how come, uh, how come you never got married? And he said, very insightful answer. He said, for the same reason as Jesus. I said, ooh, why is that? He said, I didn't want to be crucified twice. <laughs> I said, oh, got some issues, do you, Padre? <laughs> want to talk a few things out? <laughs> very nice, though. And is this the whole family that's with you here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I'm sorry I asked this family anything. <laughs> It's going to start a fist fight. You watch. The two of them are going to get me up swinging at each other before the end of this show is over. <laughs> Lady, only dogs here in that octave, okay? Bring it down a little bit. <laughs> right now, there's a basset hound in Hallandale going, What do you do, Julie, dear, dare I ask there, little darling, huh? What do you do? <laughs> it's not me, right? She has the attention span of a flashbulb, am I correct? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not me, correct? <laughs> okay. Hi, creepy, I'm sticky. Go ahead. Oh, I forgot who I asked. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to be here a while. You what? Okay. Does a special bus pick you guys up for school in the morning? I'm just going to throw it out there. Mom's going, we've been trying to get the bus for a while now. They, they just drive by her. It's very sad. Oh my God, you guys are good. I don't know why the other acts said you sucked. <laughs> you guys are a good crowd. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Lachheim, Lachheim, did I say that? Did I have enough hook in my heim? Do I have Jewish folks here? Did I say that correctly? <laughs> did I say Lachheim? Did I say that right? Yeah, thank you. Are you Jewish? I dated Jewish. I dated Jewish girls growing up because I grew up in Brooklyn. It was like a smorgasbord of dating. I dated Jewish girls, dated uh, 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 Hindu girls, I met this really hot Hindu chick on jihadis.com. <laughs> Two, three, four. But I dated this Jewish girl, lived in Manhattan Beach, uh, Brooklyn, and we had a mad crush on each other. And uh, she spoke Hebrew as a second language fluently. It's a tough language to master. Hebrew is very difficult. Uh, but as a courtesy to her and her family, I learned everybody's first name in Hebrew. And in Hebrew, her first name was <laughs> In English, it was Audrey. She had a younger brother. <laughs> in English, his name was Tim. Uh, yeah, but like I said, Never been married, no kids, that's the reason why. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Go ahead, try it, you'll lose, lady, I swear to God. <laughs> Give it a shot, go ahead, watch what happens. Watch what happens.
Don't mess with me when I'm working. I don't come to your club and put glue on the pole, do I? <laughs> oh, no, he didn't! <laughs> Dude, you're all right, huh? Guy with the gray hair. I remember those days. I remember the strip clubs gall dirty. <laughs> You can say whatever you want. It's, it's, it's a, you, you can chime in whatever you like. I tell you, you're definitely what? You're definitely what? Okay, nice talking with you. So do we have uh, birthdays, people celebrating stuff today? How, how, all right, very nice. <laughs> Let me guess, the guy from Brooklyn? <laughs> Who'd have thunk it in a million years, eh? <laughs> How old are you, birthday person? Uh, 75 years young. 75 years young, hell yeah. I'm gonna hook up with a golden girl after the show. What's your name, darling? Karen. Karen, oh, a Karen, white lady. <laughs> Who'd have and she is, is she, are you a Karen? Okay. 75. Got the Golden Girls, ladies and gentlemen, sitting right up front. All right, so we're going to sing Happy Birthday to Karen, who's 75 today. Are you ready? Okay. From the top. One, two, three. Stop, 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 stop. That's white happy birthday. That's white folks singing happy birthday. A death march. We're gonna try black happy birthday. We have some black folk in the audience here tonight? Thank you, one guy in the back. It is Sarasota. <laughs> From the top, black happy birthday, ready? Happy birthday to ya. Very good, white people. Oh my goodness. Look, everyone else is going. They have their own happy birthday now? What the heck is going on? Happy birthday to you, my dear. Very nice. And who is this lovely young lady with you? Very nice. And uh, how old are you, young lady? I'll be 50 next month. Yeah, kid. 50. Are you married? Do you have health insurance? <laughs> and good teeth. I'm not concerned about the teeth as much as the lips, but... <laughs> Shut up! 50 years old. Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go and leave you home? What's that? Holy shit, mom is wild. I never did a mother-daughter team that was 75 and 50, but... Holy shit! I was only kidding, but I'm getting laid! Oh my god, everybody out! Get out of my room! We still going to that strip club later on, huh? You guys indeed be there. You better believe it, big guy. What's that? We got the pair, let's see, yeah, we got a pair of them over here now. They just swing around the pole a little slower. All right, is this the pole? All right. <laughs> let me get around that pole over there now. I'll tell you right, we're gonna go around it now. Here we go. You know what, you're a very strange crowd. I love you guys. You're a, you're a little older, but you're sick. I like it. Very good. I was a little scared of you in the beginning, but you're okay. Very nice. Mom and daughter, what's your name? Deirdre. Deirdre. I never met a Deirdre before. It's Irish. We're here! <laughs> and what's it happy hour then, darling? God bless all here. I actually quit drinking. Yeah, I know, sorry. Yeah, tomorrow's my anniversary, actually. Yeah, tomorrow will be a day. So keep coming back. 
Did it you quit? If you work, if you work it. Oh, you're in the program? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I was too. <laughs> How many is it years, months? How many you got? I have a year next month. A year next month. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> We're going to work on that <laughs> when the show is over. How many years were you uh, tipping a bottle? Oh, from birth. What do you mean? From birth. All right. All right. <laughs> Mom, you raised a hell of a kid over here, huh? <laughs> Two years old. Where's my beer, goddammit? <laughs> I am not putting up with any of this bullshit. <laughs> I am not drink. I only had two drunks. I'll tell you what I did have recently, which really was kind of interesting. I had a wisdom tooth out, and my dentist gave me Percocet. Oh, my God. Have you had some experience with this narcotic? I don't know why they named it Percocet. There is nothing perky about this drug. They should have named it Coma John. That would have been a better... And they have a nerve to put on the bottle, do not operate heavy machinery under the influence of this narcotic. Heavy machinery? I couldn't operate a spoon under the influence of this narcotic. I was over bowl of soup going, I can't get the soup to stay on. The soup won't stay on the spoon. What? Oh, turn it over. My dentist, God bless her, she gave me a prescription for 60 pills. Well, it was actually six, there was room for a zero. I put that in myself. There was room for two zeros, but I don't want to get carried away with myself. You, know? you can see the pharmacist, 600 Percocet? Uh, yeah, I lost a leg. Hurry up, let's go, I'm in a lot of pain. It's back in the dentist's office a week later going, could you take these out for me over here? They're bothering me. So my dentist says to me, she goes, you're gonna be in a lot of pain because they had to break some of the bone. And she said, so it says on the prescription, take one every six to eight hours as needed, and then one after that. So she said, because you're gonna be in a lot of pain, I'm gonna tell you to take two. And I said, well, what kind of pain? She said, like, you know, you ever see those little smiley faces on the wall? You got the really sad one? Like, hey. She's like a number eight. So I said, the hell with that. I went home, I took four. I watched television for eight hours straight. And then I turned it on. This is a good show. Must be a repeat. Now I know when you're getting the good stuff how it, how it is, because I had to get a refill for that prescription. You got the little uh, droopy eye, the little firecracker, right? The martini glass with the slash through it, yeah. Mine had an eight by 10 of Betty Ford going. <laughs> Some things I'm proud of my Irish heritage for. The bagpipes are not one of them. That is a very annoying instrument. Thank you. Danny Boy and Amazing Grace. Those are the only two things you should be able to play on a bagpipe, am I right? Thank you, even though I was raised with them. You know how the bagpipes get started? Anybody? Bueller, anyone? Okay, so the Scots took this instrument from the Egyptians, actually, and the original instrument was a bag that you squeezed on that blew air through a reed. Does anyone know what the bags are made of? Bladders of goats, that's correct. This is what happens when you combine alcohol and boredom, right? Just imagine a couple of thousand years ago, there was a few Scotsmen standing around in a field, right? and perhaps, perhaps they've had a pint or two too many, and there's not much to do, and they're looking out over their herd of goats. And one of them turns to the other and he says, hey, McTavish, hey? Do you see that herd of goats over there? I do. You do? I do. I have got an idea. Why don't you run over there and blow into the ass end of one of those goats and see if you can get a sound out of them? 
all right. And he crawled up behind that goat. <laughs> the goat went, Danny boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling. Oh, God bless all here. If you end with a song or a fight or a drink, it's okay with the Irish. Indeed. So we gonna have a party on your uh, anniversary? Hell yeah. So you've never been married? So what are your issues? We can see why she's never getting married, but. Only kidding, Precious, just teasing. Don't get mad at me. Don't try to cancel me. Everybody today wants to get canceled. They want to cancel every comic. Knock it off. What happened to our young people? They lost their balls. What happened? Oh my God. What's going on with our young people? Can you believe at this stage of our life, we're the guys carrying the mantle here, trying to drag everyone through to, to reason? I was working in Myrtle Beach recently at a um, uh, comedy club down there called Coconuts. Anybody know it? Yeah. So, okay, so I'm working down there, and there's a guy sitting up front right here this close, and he's a good-looking young guy sitting with two good-looking young women. So I do what I'm doing. I'm bouncing around. I'm talking to people. And I said, I said, oh, look at you, good-looking guy sitting with two good-looking women right up front. I said, you're either the man or you're the man. <laughs> This guy jumps up and he shows me a ring on his left finger and he goes, hey man, I'm engaged. I said, okay, who's the lucky dude? <laughs> so this really sends him spinning, right? He's like, and I said, all right, relax, Tinkerbell. All right, take it easy. So I'm walking around, coming down, we're going, I go, everything good over here, Fruity? All right, I said, Hi. would you like a cocktail? It has two of your favorite things, cock and tail. Would you like? <laughs> so, I'm working a crowd, working a crowd. 45 minutes into my show, this guy gets up. He starts putting on his jacket. He's all pissed off, full of histrionics. I go, now I gotta address it. I go, what's up, you leaving? He goes, yes. I said, you're upset? I'm upset. I go, you're leaving? Yes, I'm leaving. And I, the girls too. I said, okay, well then get out. You know, you've been here for an opening act, an MC, a, a guest spot, uh, 45 minutes of me, and now you're pissed off? Get out, and nobody needs you here. So on the way out, he's making a big scene. Out he goes, I have a, finished up my, my set, and as I'm getting off the, the stage, the barmaid, who she's old school, you know, she's one of these tough broads, been there 30 years, she's missing an eye. <laughs> she's got a tattoo of one on her lid, she's smoking a cigarette. And I said, and she goes, yeah, she goes, you see that little baby? She goes, he was out here by the bar crying like the cowardly lion. Oh, 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 cut it out, cut it out. Oh, 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 oh. So at first I got upset because I didn't want to, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings intentionally, but I said, oh my God, I said, he was that upset? She goes, she goes, no, it wasn't you. She goes, as he was leaving the club, some drunk walking back in from the bathroom went, hey, you're the fag from the front row. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been great. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Come on, everybody!